What's up, everyone? It's Shaletta. I'm here getting a phone for one of my newly minted teenagers with Xfinity Mobile. They've got great options, affordable plans, and solid coverage that works for our whole family. With Xfinity Mobile, my daughter can stay connected with me wherever she goes. And did you know when you sign up, you can get an extra phone line free for a full year? Switch to Xfinity Mobile today for more savings, more smiles, and more ways to stay connected. You want a healthier lifestyle, but how do you get started? Then stick with it by listening to the Fitness Revolution podcast with Shea Sandifer, of course. Your journey to greater well-being starts now. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? It's Coach Shay here with Fitness Revolution. I am so excited to be here today. We have a special guest uh, that I've been able to watch from afar for a while, and now I'm getting up closer and getting to be able to see the amazing things that she's been doing over the past 20 years and really changing the face of DEI and the way we are seen in larger companies. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about her before we bring her on. So Sharon Smith Akasana is the CEO of Ray McKinsey Group an award-winning diversity, equity, and inclusion marketing firm. And she's also the founder of People of Color Careers, which is a social hiring network um, with over 20 years of experience in the DEI space. So how I get to know her is through a few ways, through U.S. Bank, but also, as you know, I am a board member and a board chair of uh, NABO uh, for marketing. And so when we were talking about ways that we could really uh, incorporate the way we've been interacting with U.S. Bank and then to know that Sharon had won and was being inducted into NAVO, which is once again, National Association for Women Business Owners Hall of Fame. So without further ado, please welcome Ms. Sharon Smith Akasana. I'm hey, saying the help. name right, right? <laughs> it's, it's Sharon Smith Akasana. Akasana, good. I want to make sure I get it right because people mispronounce uh, my name every day. So. It, 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 yeah, it's Sharon yeah. Smith Akasana. How are yeah. you? Great, great. Thank you for being here. Thanks, so last week I had Greg on and yeah. then I thought about, I was like, we got to have Sharon on who's really the big deal here, right? Uh, uh, thank you so, <laughs> so much. congratulations on being inducted. Uh, how did that feel last week? I was out of town, so I wasn't there to be able to share the joy. No, it felt, it felt really good. You know, um, uh, it, we had a good time. It was awesome to have uh, my family there. My daughter came in from Portland, Maine, uh, to help celebrate. My 84 year old mom was there. My big head oh. brother was there. Uh, <laughs> you know, so it was, it was, it felt really good. And we, I had two of my top clients there, of course, us bank and then Anderson windows and doors. So it was really nice, nice. Uh, to have them there. Uh, and the celebration, of course, being honored with all the other amazing, uh, uh women. Uh, so it yes. felt really good. Felt really good. It did. It did. So let's start backwards, right? So I, I know you've been in this work of that DEI space over the last 20 years. What first, uh, how did you get started in that? Uh, yeah, really quickly, my background is radio sales. Uh, yeah. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and I worked for, you know, top urban radio stations in the market, meaning their primary audience was African-American consumers. Mm -hmm. And that's where I got really intrigued uh, with understanding about advertising uh, corporations, sort of how they work. Um, and so that's where it, it, it got started. So as I began to work more closely with those advertisers, they began to ask me additional questions, you know, not just about how to advertise on radio, but more about the consumer, you know, and, and, and how to do a better job at reaching African-American consumers. And that sort of just intrigued me and sort of to, to do more around that space. Uh, so ultimately, I decided to come to Minneapolis, worked for Prince, uh, which had nothing to do with this, but that was the reason why I came yeah. to Minneapolis. And then I'm like, then I got back into uh, marketing and, and launched the Ray McKenzie group because that was my first love. And I didn't plan to stay here in Minneapolis, but Prince told me that um, I would never leave and that if I could. <laughs> And that if I could make this work with nearly 19 Fortune 500 companies in the market, then that would be a problem. So uh, uh, with my background, so I decided to launch the Ray McKenzie Group, which is named after my daughter, Ray McKenzie. Because oh, okay. I, I saw that corporations were leaving a lot of opportunity on the table. They weren't uh, doing a great job at marketing directly to uh, the African-American consumer, specifically in a culturally, culturally relevant way. 
uh, back in the day, they were doing this thing that I called um, granting permission to buy the product, but not really issuing a personal invitation. And so I saw an opening uh, for me to get in there and, and help them do a better job. And so in 1997, I launched the Ray McKenzie Group with a $250,000 contract from the Star Tribune because I didn't have any credit. I didn't have money. I didn't right. have anything. So, but I had a big idea. And right. so, and I was a hundred percent commission salesperson. So I knew how to sell. So mm-hmm. I had an idea and, and went and got that first contract to start the business from the Star Tribune. I love that. Love that. I did not know that about you. So that is amazing to hear. So yeah. you were in this space right before the big word DEI became like. New oh, world. yeah, that was. Yeah, that wasn't yeah. even a thing. This, this, right. you know, this came from I mean, I was in my 20s when I started working in this space, mm-hmm. uh, talking to advertisers about the importance of marketing to consumers of color. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, you know, today here in 2024 is about six trillion dollars in buying power. Uh, and so, yes. and then as the demographics are shifting, it is important for corporations to understand how to build those relationships because, you know, that's, that's the tiebreaker. You know, when you're a CEO and your job is shareholder value, you are going to have to figure out a way to do business with people that don't look like you. Absolutely. And I love that you created this space before it was being talked about, right? Oh. Yeah, uh, that's huge because now it's, it's well, in the last five, six years, it's been in ways, right? It, it was here and it went all the way up here. And now it's like, yeah, you know, and well, I feel like it's leveling out. Don't you? Well, here's, what, here's what I think happened. Here's what okay. I think. Here's how I think of it. Here's how I think about it. Give it to me. <laughs> we, um, many corporations uh, hired uh, diversity um, chief diversity officers, not yeah. really understanding why they needed chief diversity officers. And I think what happened is that they conflated social justice with the business of diversity. Absolutely. And so, so, so whether it's George Floyd's murder, which was just awful, a uh, Black Lives Matter, whatever that thing is, right? All of those issues are important. And those are issues and um, uh, things that happen in our country that need to be addressed. Absolutely. But what's also true is that we have to make sure that we are still keeping our eye on the ball when it comes to building relationships with talent of color and consumers of color that have nothing to do necessarily with fighting the ills of society, like policing, you know, that's two different things. And so I think what has happened is we conflated those and, and and CEOs are going like, what is this all about? And, right. you know, it got mixed up and then you got people on the far right and, you know, kind of yelling and screaming about we shouldn't be doing this. And so beginning to weaponize DEI, yes. uh, you know, so we, we got the Supreme Court ruling around affirmative action uh, as opposed to, you know, in, in higher education. Right. Um, and so all of this is doing is making it harder for CEOs who are running major corporations to really make sure they have the opportunities to build those relationships. And so we used to be able to say, hey, you know, we call the schools and say, send me five or six, you know, of your top black talent. You know, they can't say that anymore. Right? <laughs> so now you have to really get out there and do the work. Right. And so in my business, I'm inviting CEOs, CHROs and C-suite leaders to get out of the ivory tower. You got to come out and build relationships one person at a time absolutely. because it is really about nurturing those relationships and having that brand reputation where people think about you first. You know, we have choices mm-hmm. and there's a workforce talent shortage. Talent is the number one problem in this region and across the nation, world-class talent. And mm-hmm. when the demographics are shifting so dramatically, to become a majority minority nation and you could be white and be all your life and not have friends that look like me and you, you got to play catch up. You got to make sure that you are putting people in your lives and in your circle to help you build those relationships because we have choices. And so that's why at the Ray McKenzie group, what I try to do is to create those spaces where we can all be in room together. Like with my um, flagship product, the people Mm -hmm. of color career fair which has been happening since October 2016. We do it twice a year, April and in October, spring and fall. Over a thousand professionals of color in the room with over 50 top employers hiring, 
interviewing, connecting, best networking in town, period. CEOs are there, talent acquisition officers are there, hiring managers are there, because we have to make sure that we're meeting each other, making those connections and expanding our networks. Shay, one of the first things that I asked the CEO that. when I, I worked with him, I know, right? One of the first things that. that, you know, one of the first things that I asked CEOs when I sit down and talk to them is like, you know, so who are your golfing buddies? Right. You know, who are you having lunch with this week? Who's on your holiday Christmas party list? Yes. Yep. That's where the, that's where I tell everyone that that's where it happens. That's a, I've been told I'm one of the queen of networking, right? I kind of just flow through everything. And they were like, you, when you, when you have something, a little bit of everybody's there, I go, because what I tell people when I speak to them about getting out there, I said, you have to go to things that you wouldn't normally feel comfortable going to. Don't go to the things that you go to with your friends. Are they writing you checks? Are they getting you to next level? Are they diversifying your group? And they say, no, I go, because you're in, your friends are great, but you're talking about business. And I love that you created this platform that's not just creating a space for companies to come in, but really to open their eyes and get their wheels turning about the things that they're lacking and connecting that, like you said, back to society and what's happening. Absolutely. So let's dig a little bit deeper on that, uh, what you said with that. So we won't go deep in it, but on this level, but we've, we've got someone new coming in for 2025. Uh, how do you feel that is going to affect DEI in these Fortune 500 companies, or even for myself, those smaller companies, the million to $5 million companies, right? Um, I've already seen it. Um, sometimes the disconnect or like, kind of like, oh, that's cute. Now we're kind of pulling back. What is your strategy as a Ray McKinsey group that's going to help these companies continue to elevate in that space? Oh, it's the business. Mm -hmm. It's a business imperative. Yes. You know, so whether you're U.S. Bank or Anderson Windows and Doors or Verizon Wireless or whomever, McDonald's, you know, they might as well close the doors if black folks and Latinos don't shop there or eat that stuff. You know, right. it's about I have six trillion reasons why <laughs> right. you know, right. cannot back down on the business of diversity. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a successful business. I don't care what Donald Trump says. I don't care what Robbie Starbucks says. I don't care what any of them say. What you can't stop is the demographics. Bingo. And we will be a majority minority nation. And those corporations who double down on understanding how to do business with and build solid, authentic relationships with those different market segments, will leave their competition in the dust. It's that simple. So there's nothing else to say. Right. Now you can decide whether or not you want to support pride parades or march in the street or you know sustainability issues. That's a whole nother segment, a whole nother department, whole nother side of your business. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we're talking about here today. Mm -hmm. I hope that as a result of you doing better at building those relationships with different market segments to increase your bottom line with your talent as well as your consumers that you will want to do some of those things that solve the ills of the world just because you're learning more right but you're not gonna not be able to not <laughs> build a relationship with the different segments of the population it's, it's too much too much money uh, latinos are 20 percent of our nation's population and we're not going anywhere. We're not, like, we're not, <laughs> we're not disappearing. We're not going to go. And, you know, and for people like us, you and I, you know, when, you know, you hear people say, well, they need to go back and go to their own land. I'm from Edina, Minnesota. I, and I'm from St. Louis, raised. Missouri. So I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. So where are we right. going to <laughs> we're, 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 we're we're go be here? You know, so, <laughs> so now what? So, right. so, so we, we got to get serious. We yes. got to get serious. So no different than when you're working on a marketing strategy inside of your corporation mm -hmm. where you've got to reach, you got to learn how to reach women, you know, early career, you know, young people, men, you must understand how to have relationships with the African-American consumer, the Latino consumer, Asians, the LGBTQ. It's worth too much revenue. And unfortunately, you will need to learn how to do that. So right. I am not least bit bothered by the fact that, not, not for this reason, the fact that Donald Trump won the election. 
I don't think that's going to really impact the smart people in business. Now, there will be some that we've heard, you know, like Harley Davidson and different people that have decided they want to pull back. But in my opinion, they want to pull back anyway. Yes. I do not believe that they're just that weak, that they're going to let somebody force their hand and teach them, to, you know, force them how to do business because they wrote a bad article. I believe that was an excuse for them to not do that work. Uh, because if they could be pushed around that easily, they don't need to be CEO. I absolutely agree. Yeah. It was not just that moment that made you that decision. Absolutely. I've been thinking about this. That was, come on, this. come on now. Come on now. <laughs> right, right. I might right. have been born at night, but not last night. <laughs> so, so I just really feel like that, you know, consumers of color, professionals of color, we really are in a cat burst seat and have the opportunity to make choices as to where we want to spend our time, our treasure, where we want to give our time for the good careers, mm-hmm. because, you know, the, the, the companies in, that are based here in the Twin Cities, based in Minnesota, they do business all over and they need world-class talent. It's mm-hmm. just what it is. And the white population is reducing, dwindling, okay? And it's older. And so it's gonna be a challenge. So they must figure this out by attaching themselves to experts like yourself and myself and others who can really help them connect with um, the right communities, the right events to participate in. What should they be sponsoring? Where should they be showing up at? What should they not be showing up at? You know, what should they be saying when they get there? How to curate their tables, what they should be talking about. It's a lot to this. It's like dating. It's like dating. You know how difficult that is. You know how difficult being married is. It's the same thing. And it's not, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch and we got to put the work in. Yes. And so that's mm-hmm. why I love what I do at People of Color Career Fair, celebrating the sisters, uh, which is amazing event in March during Women's History Month, where yes. we celebrate the infinite impact of black women during Women's History Month. And we do that because you and I can live anywhere. We don't have to live here. And in, or we need to and they can't afford the employers cannot afford to lose top talent <clears throat> and those of us who are making an impact in this region. And I don't want us moving to Austin and Charlotte and Dallas and <laughs> Chicago. They yeah. want us to be here. And so when we celebrate the infinite impact of black women, it sets the stage that anybody can thrive here in the Twin Cities. You can see yourself when we're recognizing those powerful women up through and into the C-suite and say, okay, well, maybe this is okay for me. I'm, I won't take that job. You know, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna hang with right. with Jay. I'm gonna hang with Sharon. I'm gonna hang with those women that, you know, that I just saw honored. So we have the governors and <clears throat> the senators and CEOs come to celebrating the sisters and honor those women. And people say, Sharon, why do you have all those white people give those awards? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean all those white people? Those are my friends, first of all. But you know, for, for and women, we're in Minnesota. <laughs> Well, well, and yeah, and, and and the reason for that is because we know how amazing we are. Right. And this is not an event where we're preaching, want to preach to the choir. We want, we want the CEOs of these corporations that have promoted these women to come and tell people why they're so special. We, we want the governor to be there. We want to showcase the fact that we actually are trying to do better, trying to walk the walk. Not that we're made it that way, made Mm -hmm. it yet, but that we are getting there. We're moving in the right direction and that I'm willing to come out on a Saturday night as a CEO, as a Senator or a governor and say, this is important. This is important for me to share this story honor this amazing woman and take the time to do so, it sends a powerful message. And Absolutely. so that is why we, we do it the way we do it. And we're very, very proud of our presenters and our honorees and all of our those that participate because we got to tell our own stories. Uh, That's my famous that. line. Uh, I met Oprah years ago and uh, t- 20 years ago at an event in uh, Rome, 
for mm. a fundraiser. And, um, you know, I was young, I was probably 24 years old and I see her and she, she's always been my favorite. And I just, you know, the norm, I'm crying. I was just like, I'm so excited. She goes, calm down. She goes, you got a great spirit. She goes, make sure you tell your story always. So no one else can, they've been That's telling right. their stories. And that sits with me to this day now, you know, uh, from where I've built businesses, right. And been able to tell the story that I wanted to tell through the lens of me as a black woman. Right. Yeah. I look back to 15, 16 years ago when I worked in corporate America and there was 12 of us that got our hair done between 9 a.m. and noon on Fridays, every Friday. Yep. And it was all black women, all yep. educated from all over the United States. You know, they, that was when recruiting was really big 20 oh, years boy. ago to bring them in from FAMU That's and right. all the HBCUs. And by the time um, I left corporate, there was two of us left in Minnesota. They had all left for various reasons, for things from the uh, the way they were treated in corporate America to dating, you know. Yeah, right. um, and of the left. 10 that left, eight of them are married. Eight of them are beyond excelling. And I mean, because they live out of state, but like that narrative now that you're saying, I think has changed, right? From the event that you put on in March to highlight these women that are doing all this, the not just Minnesota, but the world needs to see what is happening Absolutely. and how we are changing the way corporate America and as you know, entrepreneurs, how we look and what we're doing. It You know, you get, you don't ever want to hear as a small business as a woman, that little business. Oh, that's cute what you're doing. And you're thinking nothing, but I'm cute, but nothing when I'm well, doing exactly. <laughs> No, right? I mean, yeah, you know, it takes hard work to build. We all know, you know, a seven figure business hard. Uh, and, you know, we, and, and, and even a six figure business, you know, so, <laughs> so, and we, you know, we hope that our, our entrepreneurs go from when I think about Nabo, you know, mm -hmm. from, you know, we want them going from six to seven figures, Absolutely. Uh, you know, making sure that they can take care of themselves and their family and be, you know, sustainable, leave a legacy, make sure they can retire well. Um, you know, that's all of that's very important. And I want to promote the fact that this can be done it can. here in the region, that we can we can do this. We can do this in the region, mm -hmm. you know, um, and that's what it's all about. And, and, and like I said, we can be, I don't have to live here. Yeah. I choose to live here. I believe in this place. I yeah. know we can do better. Um, mm -hmm. And so, and we have the infrastructure to do that. We think about our nonprofits, our arts community, our corporate rations. We all should be able to be just fine. Yes. There's plenty for all of us. Plenty. There really is. There's enough space. There's enough sponsorship. There's enough, like all of that. Power, resources. Power, all of that. So, so for those that are listening, right, that are like are, are the smaller businesses and want to connect with corporations, I know you're kind of that gateway a lot of times. Yeah. What advice would you give that small business when they feel stuck and they're right before that seven figures and they just can't really connect with that big company to highlight whatever services or products they have? So look, there are, you know, so so the main thing is to nurture relationships, network, 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 right? Wherever opportunity you can get to get in the room, make sure you're meeting people to nurture the relationships. But understand that there are corporations that are looking for you too. So mm -hmm. when you think about the supplier diversity departments, they really actually still exist inside of most major corporations. And their job is to get to know amazing small businesses like yourself, important businesses that are providing awesome products and services and they want to do business with you. It is a business imperative. They have a goal. Yes. And so you want to identify that person. You want to find that procurement officer in charge of having a relationship with you. I love that. And, and begin to build those relationships. And don't be afraid because they're trying to find you too. Yes. <laughs> and so when you so get up there, get that elevator pitch together, introduce yourself and stop saying no to these events. When people <laughs> ask you to go somewhere. <laughs> You don't have nothing to do. Go. That, that, that I would say is the number one thing that kills me. You know, I'm on five boards. I go to everything. And when people are like, oh, I can't make it. Or the excuse, I was like, well, you just cut your own check off. Right. Stop it. it. Stop. 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 Thank you. I'm glad you're saying this because I feel like it's always just me saying this. I'm like, you no. do not understand who you meet. And that one person may love you. 
and they not they, it might not be them and i i'll give this example recently i'm on a board and out of nowhere months ago i get an email from a board member introducing me to her company because they're looking for a keynote there you go that's what i just was a keynote for thompson and reuters for their first back since 2019 aspire to lead conference for 500 people awesome that's what and i'm just know. saying that right that's but being in the, the right room it. going to the golf tournaments i don't even really golf that good <laughs> But you know what they have? Uh, I'd be cute on there. the cart, girl. I'd be so yes. cute on that cart. And you get the cute little dress and, and little they love it. And they, the, girl. Yeah, they know, you know what they know? You're about business and you want to talk because exactly. people think it's in the boardroom. And this is where the connections for us as black and brown folks get out of your comfort zone. I know it may be difficult. It takes one time. You'll be fine. Absolutely. Because guess what? They want to talk to you too. They yeah. want to know. Exactly. They want to know who you are, who you are, what you're doing, what you're about. But They're not at the club. We got <laughs> to get out there and go to the small events, the big events, the, you know, what, and I get it. I mean, you got to pick and choose. I mean, we're not robots, but my, yeah. my point is, it's a lot. You no, know, for the sake of staying, you know, be strategic, mm -hmm. but know that the one-on-one -on -one connection is how we do this thing. Right. <laughs> That's how mm -hmm. we do this thing. Yes. Well, you've been doing it. You've been doing it. Oh, uh, <laughs> Your sustainability and longevity, what do you, give me like a one sentence, what do you think the key has been? Uh, deliver. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm known for delivering results. Yes. So when you do business with Sharon Smith, I can sign you and her team at the Ray McKenzie Group, most people know they're going to get a stellar product and get great results. Um, and so you got to deliver, deliver, over deliver, over deliver, over communicate, uh, be excellent and you know be someone that your client can count on i love you know, that they, they don't want you know they they want to understand what's yes. what's going to happen and just be someone that your client can, can count on so i think the fact that i deliver has been the uh the biggest reason for my sustainability over all these years and the ability to nurture relationships long-term relationships yes. you know so and to make those connections for them as well you know, so so it's hard right. in business. You know, it's hard to maintain those uh, relationships. Uh, the, people come and go out of businesses. Businesses go away. Mm -hmm. You know, things personal things happen. And so, I love that you've been able to not just sustain it, but grow it and build this amazing name that people know immediately. Mm -hmm. I mean, your name immediately, right? I love the whole name. It's like, you, know, you have a distinct name that, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. here she is. And I come in the room and it's hear me roar. And I think keep, you know, creating that space, take up space, uh, creating paths for, you know, black women like myself and other women that can understand. And as I tell everyone, just because a black woman's leading, does that mean that you can't follow them? Okay. Oh. I need to make sure this because even I get this. I'm like, make sure you follow that black woman. Just like we've been told to follow other people. You know, absolutely. Yeah. We, we have to listen, you guys, we have to pay it for it. We have to make sure that we're helping each other, supporting one another. And don't ask one of the things that people I get in people's business for real. <laughs> She does, y'all. Really, really She'll what call you, you on a Saturday. Like, what you doing? You know, what's going on? Like, what's right. happening? Right. You know, and uh, do we need to talk about it or can we talk about it? What's the worst thing that can happen? Somebody could tell me it ain't none of your business. Like, that's the worst <laughs> thing that can happen to me. But we have to do a better job of getting into people's business and checking on them, making sure they're good, seeing if they need anything. And not so you can get something back. We It's so you just give it. Just keep yeah. it moving and trust me, it'll come back. It trust me to come back to you. It really, I mean, I don't, I, it just, it just happens. It really does. It does. And sometimes it's hard, especially, you know, as an entrepreneur, uh, you know, it's not always easy. You know, when you're here, then you're here and you're like, how am I get out of it? But you got to keep going and there believe in go. yourself and the path you have. And I say the key thing too, like you said, is a good pitch. What is your pitch? You need that 20, 30 oh, second pitch you gotta have so it. people know who you are mm -hmm. and get it down packed so that you can, so that your brand speaks for itself. So That's before we wrap up, what's on the horizon for you for 2025? 2025 is we're going to continue uh, to do what we've been doing, and that is delivering great content, great results, great experiences. We're looking forward to celebrating the sisters in March. We're looking forward to moving to St. Paul, to launching our first People of Color Career Fair in St. Paul in April. Okay. 
Nice. We're launching a new event platform that everybody will hear about. It's going to be amazing. And we're also launching six to seven, which is a new business directory. I want the region, all people that live in the state of Minnesota to be able to identify and find businesses owned by people of color, because we are black owned businesses, not black only businesses. Thank and you. so I want to make sure that the region knows how to find us uh, yeah. and easily. Yeah. And so we're working on six to seven and we call it six to seven because when those businesses, when those consumers find us, many of us will be able to grow if we're not there, get those businesses from six figures to seven. Oh, I love that. Because we can That's expand, a mic drop. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> we can expand our market. That we that are, is a mic drop. We are businesses owned by people of color, not only for people. Yes, yes, I love that. I and love we that. We must keep that in mind. So what I'm doing is going to be pushing that narrative and saying to the people of the state of Minnesota, these businesses should be in your list yes. of places, um, you know, to do business with. And so I just want to do that. So six to seven. So that's going to be big. I, uh, I want to learn more about that. So we'll yes, that you, okay. <laughs> yes, we'll learn more. It's great. So how can people get in touch with you? So follow me on LinkedIn. Follow me on LinkedIn. Sharon Smith Akinsanya on LinkedIn is the best way to get in touch with me. And if you want to know more about Ray McKenzie Group, you can log on to getrmg.com. So get RMG. And of course, you can always log on to peopleofcolorcareerfair.com. I love it. Well, Sharon, thank you so much for spending this time with me. Loving to learn about everything you've been doing over the course of 25 plus years. It's amazing. I know it's not easy, uh, but you make it look easy. So thank you for creating that path for myself and others. And keep being, you know, adult Black woman. I think it's amazing about the next level for you. Uh, mm -hmm. That's six to seven. I can't wait to learn about oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And congratulations on your new Hall of Fame for NAVO, which is my sister group. And I love them and I love what we're doing for women and what women are teaching other women. So thank you. Thank you so yeah. much for having me. And in, in the novel uh, Hall of Fame was a great honor. And congratulations to you, Shay. Keep on thank doing you. what you're doing and keep it moving. Thank you. Well, you guys, this is our time. And as always, inhale the positive, exhale the negative. This is Coach Shay with Fitness Revolution. We thank you, Sharon Smith Akasana, and we will see you soon. Bye bye. Bye -bye. Check back next week for more on living your healthier lifestyle and share previous episodes of Shay's podcast with your friends. Log on to ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com. You know Shaletta makes you laugh, but did you know Shaletta Brundage can also make you think and boost your business? Media personality, activist, and comedian Shaletta Brundage founded Shaletta Makes Me Laugh to celebrate and share the best of black culture. It's a podcasting platform. You can download 10 weekly podcasts hosted by African-American subject experts at ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com is also a production house creating broadcast quality commercial content. And Shaletta and her team of storytellers create powerful promotional campaigns to get businesses the brand awareness they're looking for. Some of Minnesota's top businesses trust Shaletta, and you can too. Get out the word about your events and products and get in front of communities of color with ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com. She's got the power to help your business.